Okay. Sounds good. Hey, folks. Uh, so today uh, we're going to cover um, how to build edge clouds. Uh, I'm going to use Tungsten Fabric as an example because, simply because I'm most familiar with it. Uh, but the lessons you're going to learn are going to be applicable to um, any other uh, technology that you choose for your networking. Um, all right. Uh, so what does uh, Edge really need? Uh, Edge needs uh, service agility. In other words, ability to seamlessly deploy things uh, in remote environments, ability to reinstall them and upgrade them and do so securely. Uh, because the last thing you want to do is to do a truck roll just to reinstall something that's sitting underneath a pile of sweaters. Uh, so you also need to have operational efficiencies. You will have a very limited compute footprint on the edge. So you cannot afford to have a FAT control plane occupying 11 servers anymore. You have to compress things down, uh, yet uh, you cannot give up on the functionality, such as monitoring security or anything else. Uh, so uh, you still need to retain the ability to perform all of those advanced functions, even though you're going to be limited on the hardware, power, space. Um, one of the primary uh, things that needs to happen on the edge is security. Uh, I think this has been brought home by multiple hacks from multiple companies, but the companies can no longer afford to have a distributed infrastructure that is not securing itself. Uh, you also need to have a consistent operating architecture uh, simply because uh, if you have too many things going on across your entire network, you won't be able to manage it long term. Uh, and then, uh, like I said before, doing a truck roll for a small device sitting underneath the power sweaters is incredibly expensive. So you need to have a zero touch architecture, you need to have the ability to do self recovery and other things. Uh, so fortunately, OpenStack uh, and um, some of the networking SDN products can be shrunk to fit into that space. So um, I know this is a really busy slide that's uh, showing uh, the typical edge deployment, which is uh, mid-tier central office, right? So this is not quite the pile of sweaters I promised. This is more of a hack, half rack worth of gear, uh, and at that point, uh, uh, an OpenStack and an advanced SDN start making sense. Uh, okay, so what does Tunstan Fabric do uh, to enable such an edge deployment? Uh, well, the Tunstan Fabric uh, shrunk its own control plane. So the typical uh, Tunstan Fabric control plane has multiple Cassandra instances, have its own analytics services, and everything else. It's fairly heavyweight. Uh, I believe we're somewhere between 20 and 50 containers uh, for the entire uh, edge compute infrastructure. However, uh, what uh, the Tungsten Fabric project in 5.0 have done is create an ability to have a uh, remote location uh, which is treated as a pop uh, that can uh, operate with one or two containers or VMs um, as part of your um, infrastructure. Uh, this ties into a more central location uh, where the advanced analytics uh, and all of the, the rest of the control plane runs. So all you need to do uh, to provide a couple of peering VMs at that central location and then you can fully utilize uh, a converged control plane that can span across all of your edge locations. Okay, um, so this is uh, a little bit better picture uh, that displays what's going on. So you have a couple of pops. Uh, the pops are running um, just uh, vRouter uh, with a gateway to get you out to the, uh, to the VLAN. And then all you need is uh, a couple of control elements uh, that uh, can uh, bridge you to the rest of your uh, Contrail cluster. Um, and then you have a central UI central analytics, uh, central monitoring, central security policy administration, and everything else uh, at the cost of a very, very, very small footprint. Now, obviously, since Tungsten Fabric is an SDN provider, uh, this doesn't quite finish the story because you have to select an OpenStack infrastructure on the edge that will also have relatively minimal requirements. So maybe uh, two-server HA, uh, if such as possible, 
uh, or three servers at the most, uh, but with ability to run meaningful workloads on the same servers as you have the control plane, right? So you still need to finish half of the story uh, and you need to select the right OpenStack infrastructure that will deliver a minimal footprint while maximizing the usable compute capacity. So Intel had that technology, I believe now it's inherited by the Acrano project, so hopefully I'm hoping for them to succeed and get their stuff into some sort of production readiness shape uh, in about a year. Uh, but I think uh, both the canonical booth uh, and the Red Hat booth are demonstrating some interesting edge stuff. And then Mirantis just released Kubernetes on the edge, which is yet another spin uh, on a potential uh, edge cloud. OK. So let me give you a quick introduction to Tunstall Fabric for those of you who are not familiar what the project is all about. Uh, so Tunstall Fabric uh, is a single SDN that bridges uh, hybrid clouds, public clouds, private clouds. Uh, it also works across OpenStack, Kubernetes, and bare metal. Uh, so its control plane can be tied into the Neutron and CNI uh, and can uh, seamlessly bridge your Kubernetes to your VMware, to your OpenStack, to your bare metal environments. It could span out to Kubernetes into the Amazon cloud and things like that, right? So it's one SDN that wants to try to do, uh, to dominate the world and do everything on its own. Uh, it does succeed uh, that. Uh, some of the demos that you can see uh, in some of the other Tungsten Fabric events uh, at the summon demonstrate those capabilities. Okay. So, um, like I mentioned before, um, security is fairly important. Uh, this started in version 4 and advanced in version 5, and it's essentially an intent-based security management framework uh, for Tunstall Fabric. Um, so, uh, it, 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 it's intent-based in, in, in the sense that you're going to define things on the basis of the applications. Uh, so that means that each application gets a security rule, uh, which will get interpreted correctly regardless of the context it runs in. Right? So it can run in dev mode, production mode, or any other mode. It'll still be a single rule that you have to define and maintain. You don't need to worry about uh, the individual network endpoints. Uh, the framework will be capable of interpreting all of them. So this gives you ability to deploy essentially a uh, distributed stateful uh, L4 firewall uh, across your entire network, including your public and private cloud. Oh, by the way, it can also do, uh, in the commercial version, not in the uh, open source version, it could do end-to-end uh, -end encryption uh, of your traffic, if you so choose. And it actually does that in the commercial Contrails version. Uh, when you go to the public cloud, it will encrypt your tunnel going from your data center into the public cloud. It assume, assumes an untrusted infrastructure. So uh, that provides you a very useful uh, security stance. Uh, now, with the service function chaining, Tungsten Fabric can introduce ability to do more than L4. Right? You can do transparent IDS IPS. You can do L7. Uh, so I believe in the commercial version, of the product, uh, Juniper has uh, a CSRX uh, that uh, can serve as a very intelligent L7 firewall, of course, fully distributed with the ECMP load balancing allowing you to scale up your CNIs. So uh, this is how, so both the compact footprint uh, and the additional security infrastructure that gives you a uniform security policy management uh, do provide uh, basic service needs for the clouds. Obviously, you still need to find a few other pieces, right? So you do need to select a uh, distro which will give you a consistent edge deploy story, right? So ability to deploy and seamlessly upgrade, right? So this has been one of the biggest challenges in OpenStack. Uh, I think it's a problem that's partially solved and hopefully it'll be fully solved uh, eventually. So you also need to still consider uh, about how you're going to get your uh, controller footprint on, let's say, a couple of cores from three servers and few gigabytes of RAM, right? So you still need to have a fairly compact OpenStack footprint in order to deliver Edge. 
so there's various edge initiatives going on, right? So obviously OpenStack at the edge is one of them. And this is an OpenStack summit, but uh, if you're here as a user, you should not ignore uh, the uh, several Kubernetes projects, including Kubernetes edge uh, deployments that's going to be there. So at some point, both uh, getting VMs and containers on your edge will be important, and you should be paying attention to both. Okay, so this just gives you a uh, picture of how uh, the security policy can be transposed to multiple, to multiple instances of the application running in the clouds. Uh, obviously, you can also have an underlying policy that defines the difference between the security policy and production that's enforced underneath, uh, not, that's not defined by the application owners. So uh, that's it for my presentation, and um, I'm open for questions. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful day.